All right, time for the long-awaited creator contest results. A quick reminder in case you weren't aware, somehow, I've mentioned it in every single video, but sometime last year, about six months ago, I announced the creator contest with a central focus on player colors. In hindsight, I probably gave you guys way too much time because most of you submitted your creations right before the deadline anyway. Honestly, there are a lot of things I learned hosting this contest, and I'll definitely take those lessons with me when I host the next one. For example, I definitely should have made it a requirement for you to submit a video of your level, because a lot of these don't have one which made it needlessly convoluted for me to rate them and showcase them. That one's on me. Some of you guys definitely made some mistakes too, though. Like, I hope you remember the part where I said the level should be something I could conceivably beat, right? Some of you submitted straight up extreme demons when I explicitly told you not to do that. That one is definitely on you, and I did have to disqualify some levels as a result. I will be more clear about this in the future just to be safe, but still, I take no responsibility for this. With that out of the way, let's just get right into it. I did disqualify some levels, but I still wanted to showcase them as honorable mentions because they're pretty good levels in their own right. So let's start there. First, by Jones101. This level is crazy. Definitely made by an insane person. I kind of like the way this looks though. The unabashed use of saturated bright colors give it a very chaotic feel. The gameplay in this level is really bad though. Partly because of the overuse of the move trigger. Also, there's a puzzle partway through the level that I straight up could not figure out. So I couldn't even see the whole level. I had to open the editor to see the rest. Another thing about this level is that I couldn't really tell if player colors were used at all. So I went into the editor to check and... Surprise, I couldn't find anything. This level doesn't use them, which was the whole point of the contest. So it is disqualified. Next, Stargazer by MAGA707. This level is crazy. Crazy difficult, that is. Oh my god, this is by far the hardest level submitted in this contest. There's no doubt in my mind that this is an extreme demon. You guys can't fool me with this. I've played a lot of insanes for that top 50 video. I know how insane demons play. This definitely feels different. Too hard. Disqualified. Despite that though, I do kind of like this level. As you can maybe tell, it limits itself to only 1.4 objects. Or 1.5? I'm honestly not sure. It's it's before my time. I started playing in 1.8. Either way, you can tell that with the limited gameplay options, the level really had to get creative in order to stay interesting. I think the gameplay in this level is super fascinating. The limitations imposed on creators in older updates definitely produced a certain style of gameplay that you don't really see anymore nowadays. So in that sense, this level was a great blast from the past. I love the use of fade triggers in this part, by the way. Finally, one more honorable mention. Uh, this this one wasn't disqualified. I just wanted to bring it up. Lost and Never Found by Quawexful. This level is crazy. I'm honestly not sure what to think of this. I will say though, it feels like this level should just be auto, considering most of it is auto anyway. The gameplay just feels really bad in this level. It's janky, but it's also kind of unfitting. Anyway, the level tells a very uncanny story, which I, I can't really figure it out. I can't tell at all if the player colors are important or not, or if they're just tacked on for the contest. It definitely feels kind of sinister though. It's a weird feeling. I can't exactly put my finger on it, but I wanted to showcase it anyway. That's it for honorable mentions. Let's get into the top 10 proper now. Now. Number 10 is Sudden Death by Dubstore. If you saw my latest video about the 2.2 update, you may already know that the pixel block aesthetic is kind of boring in my view. And those are definitely the weakest parts of this level. At the same time, the level does have a standout wave and ship section partway through the level. And it ends on an admittedly interesting memory section. Although figuring it out was definitely very annoying. Especially after playing a level I felt was overstaying as welcome. I'm already at 100%. When are you going to end, dude? Nine is Hair Loss by Moloff. This level has some nice parts, but it is also very rough around the edges in some others. Some parts have cool background effects and look a lot more impressive than the parts where the design of the level has to carry its weight on its own, which I don't think it's capable of. It's very inconsistent in that way. Eight. 
Theory of Color by Dash.256. When I saw the name of this level, I got really excited because I love the idea of a TOE2 inspired level with player colors. The 80% ship part is so iconic to me, not only for its difficulty spike, but also the use of player colors. And I think this level does an admirable attempt. But in a lot of parts, the colors just don't really do it for me. I feel like it's too afraid to really lean into the player color aspect too much. A lot of the time, it just uses one at a time. Still, I do have a soft spot for this level nonetheless. I like the gameplay a lot, to be honest. In seventh place... D's by Just a Book. This level is pretty funky. It has some pretty simple but good looking effects, although I would have liked to see a little more variation. Also, the level is a little on the difficult side. It was hard for me to get a handle on the gameplay to judge it. It is kind of short, so I'll give it a pass, but I did tell you guys not to overdo it with the difficulty. Regardless, for what it's doing, I do like this level. It's a bit short though. Six. Hi! By Rai. This level is pretty cute. I like the design of this level a lot, but it loses points for being way too conservative with the player colors. I feel like you could make the decoration monochrome and it wouldn't really change anything. It's a good level, but for this contest specifically, I feel like it's not really doing enough. Number five. Your Complexion by BRRTS. The main focus of this level is vibes. It's a vibes based level. I have to say, the name is a super clever choice for a level about player colors. That really tickles me. The level has a lot of dope background effects and overall is put together very creatively. It suffers in the gameplay department though. Way too much of this level is auto and it really breaks up the flow in a way I don't care much for. Number four is Spectrum by Wickerwick. This level starts off monochrome, but then gradually introduces player colors in the second half, which I think is a cool way to go about it. The design of the level looks pretty good too. Just an all around solid entry. Just barely doesn't make it into the top three. Well, somebody had to end up in fourth place. Sorry about that. Number three. Death and Claimed by BTDXP, which stands for Bloons Tower Defense Expert, which I just now made up, but uh, it's, it's true nonetheless. I actually had a hard time placing this one and the previous entry because there are definitely some similarities between the two and both are good levels in their own right. I decided to put Death and Claimed higher though, because I like how well it uses its player colors as an accent. It's a little more subtle than most other levels in this contest, but it's definitely still a central aspect of the level. I don't know, I, I just think it's cool. Also, I guess I can't deny that I do have a bias towards this nostalgic design style from the 1.9 era. Number two. Lurri by Head Stuck in a Jar. This definitely isn't the most bombastic level on this list, but man, it's just such a vibe. I love the subdued chill effects, and I love the use of breakable blocks. People definitely don't use those enough. The level has more variety than a lot of other entries, which I also appreciate a lot. Though it does mean the level ends on kind of a weak part in comparison. Either way though, this level is really good. Awesome job. And for the number one spot, I've got a very special level here. Wevel by Devilish Shark. This level is super cool. I love the effects. I love the creative gameplay. I love the dope as fuck wave part. This is so awesome, dude. The only blemish on this level is the UFO part with the invisible gravity portals. That's very annoying to play. Shame on you. But 
Despite that, a very well-deserved top spot. It really goes in hard on the player colors, facing my challenge head-on, which I respect a lot. And it really makes the level pop, too, because the colors look really good no matter what color combination you choose, which displays a lot of competence when it comes to creating, I think. That, together with the awesome creative gameplay, makes this level really stand out among the crowd. Dude, I love swooping up and down with the ship. No more straight flying, more swooping and more swerving, okay? Anyway... Congratulations, Devilish Shark. Now remember, the prizes for first, second, and third place were 50, 20, and 10 euros respectively. So if your level placed in the top three, you can contact me and I'll hand it over to you. I'm going to make it your responsibility though. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and Discord in the description. Those are your best bets to get a quick response from me. Anyway, this was a lot of fun. I hope you guys had fun too. It was really cool to see people create these player color levels because they're pretty rare in GD. So I'm just happy to see it. If I end up doing another contest, I'll definitely need to think of another unique rule to implement. I already have some ideas, but We'll see what happens. For now, a big thank you to everyone for participating. If your level didn't place in this video, you can feel free to ask me about it on Discord or Twitter, and I'll explain my reasoning. Maybe it'll help you. Either way, shoutouts to my grandpa demons Xkami, Belfry Clock, and Alfiria for supporting me on Patreon. I do plan to make the prize pools bigger if more people subscribe to my Patreon, so there's a little incentive for you if you care about that. But uh, I think that does it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone, and see you later.